the same. So? Who's the monster? So I want to start off by asking, you know, who are Henry and who are Bonnie in this uh, world of Echo? And um, Debra, if you want to start that off. Sure. Uh, I play the character of Bonnie in Echo. And Bonnie is somebody who was incredibly close with Maya Lopez growing up. Uh, she was a coda, which is a child of deaf adults. So even though Bonnie's a, a hearing person, she is able to speak ASL fluently. And, and as a result of that, they were able to get incredibly close, almost like sisters growing up. So when Maya Lopez is, is kind of torn away to New York City uh, and becomes part of Fisk's army, there's a, a disconnect that happens and a severing of that relationship between Maya and Bonnie. And when Maya comes back into town, back into the Choctaw Nation, uh, and has to confront all of these demons of her past, I think the relationship with Bonnie is one that's that's haunted her, that she doesn't necessarily want to deal with, but is really uh, representative of the heart of Maya behind this really dark and, um, and, and really gritty facade that she, that she has. Uh, Uncle Henry is uh, running the Oklahoma chapter of Fisk's crime syndicate when Maya comes back into his life. And I think Maya represents uh, uh, the ghost of Christmas past for some of his uh, demons that he didn't want to confront. And I think he's forced to confront that with her. And I feel like he's in, he owes her and he feels like uh, try to protect her, but she can she doesn't need protecting whatsoever. So Hannah Henry is mainly just running around trying to clean up after her. And that was fun to do. Um, it was great work with the Lockwell Cox. She's amazing. And I think when people see this, you're gonna see how fire her performance is. Hell yeah. And I mean, working opposite her, um, you are both presented with the, um, you know, challenge of speaking in sign language or um, signing um, in most conversations in this show, which is something I hadn't even considered really when I was tuning in. I was like, oh, wow, like everyone, all of these people had to, I don't know how much did you have to learn um, in order to communicate with her? And also, you know, what, how did that influence your approach to the characters? Because obviously that's a different approach than most other, you know, speaking roles. Yeah. I didn't previously know ASL despite always having wanted to learn, and I think this presented an opportunity to learn this really beautiful language and learn about deaf culture. And um, I think it was a responsibility that was, was like very heavy, but never burdensome. We just, we wanted to make sure that we were, we were, showing the most respect to to this community as possible and also to be able to communicate with Alakwa who uh, who is deaf like we're both hearing people and so we want to make sure that we're doing the most that we can to be inclusive not only in this work but also beyond like I'm I'm still learning ASL even after the show has wrapped and it's something I'd love to continue doing moving forward um, but yeah there, there was definitely extra steps that we all wanted to make sure we took uh, which people with as people with hearing privilege usually it's uh it's the onus is on deaf folks to have to do that so it was nice for us to be able mm -hmm. to show up in that way and and to be able to do that for all of our our mm -hmm. deaf relatives on this show yeah it's an honor to participate in their world and uh humbling as well and i gotta say doug ridloff and alakwa cox were amazing and very patient with us and we want to do justice for them and make sure we can do an authentic performance and make sure the emotions are real the ASL is real, all of that. And, you know, you're good when all these tools come together. And so I think the audience is going to see that. And, you know, I'm very, very proud of the work we all did. I think it's too fun to see the um, juxtaposition between, you know, your characters and someone like Kingpin, who mm -hmm. has an interpreter who is signing for him because he doesn't have the time or, uh, you know, mm -hmm. desire to learn that. So I guess, you know, in terms of understanding who these characters are in this world, um, you know, it feels like Maya's, you know, teetering on the, the world of, you know, crime and, um, you know, not being a hero. But do you think that this family that she has in Oklahoma, I, I guess, has the potential to make her into something more positive or transform her <laughs> into a more positive figure? Or is she just purely a villain, do you think? Well, I think, mean, I won't give anything away, but the arc of the character, you know, when you have family involved, because this is a family drama, um, there, you can't help but have some, some change in your character. I think we all know that. Uh, family can be very raw, and this is a perfect, like, um, a perfect soup 
of drama going on <laughs> for this show. And uh, we, they have ev we have everything. We have the violence, we have the, uh, the crime, the indigenous uh, community, the ASL community. And when the audience sees it, they see how dark and how good story this is, you know, they're, they're going to love it.